All right, so let's get started. Um, I wanted to welcome Nikki Ellidge Brown. She's the communication stylist to our podcast today. And for those of you that are watching the video on the blog, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to introduce you to the world of therapists that we work with, other helpers and healers, because a lot of what we do is, you know, helping therapists find their voice and their marketing and really put themselves out there. And that's what you specialize in. So share a little bit about what a communication stylist is. I totally just made this title up for myself when I was starting my business, which was almost exactly two years ago as we're recording this in April 2015. Um, but when I had first started my business, it had been after a few months of divine inspiration and what I call divine breadcrumbs because I had realized um, when I finally started just being quiet and taking time to myself in the morning before my son woke up, mm -hmm. I started to realize like this was my skill set. It always has been. I've just been using it kind of in different ways. You know, we all have that golden thread that leads us to whatever. And I felt like knock on the head, like, hey, dude, I gave you these gifts. It's time to share them in a bigger way than what you've been doing. And so I wasn't setting out like to start a business. I just was setting out to figure out like, what can I do to make better use of the skills I have that I realize don't come naturally to everybody else, you know? Mm -hmm. So then when I decided to start a business and I was trying to describe what I could help people with, because I'm like, really, if it has to do with words and people, I can help. So how do I describe that? You know, I could help you with awkward conversations with your in-laws or <laughs> hard emails to write or, you know, like sticky social situations or public speaking. I can help with anything. So what can I help people with? And I quickly saw that entrepreneurs desperately need help with being able to communicate their messages with clarity and confidence and knowing that like it's okay to just show up as you are and business doesn't have to mean boring and professional doesn't have to mean formal because we just have all these blocks, you know, in your head where you just think this is my business, this is my website. So it has to, I have to speak in the Royal we and pretend like there's this company of 50 people behind me and it's just me, you know? It's mm -hmm. just me. And so I came up with the analogy, I think in metaphors, I have all kinds of weird, crazy metaphors and analogies on my site, but this was like the first one because I realized that just like a stylist, stylist wants to help enhance who you already are. Like, I don't think any stylist wants to make you look or feel like you aren't actually, you know, like you just right. want to bring out and enhance the best of what's really in there. And yeah. that's what I like to help people do with their words, with their language and with their presence, just to be able to connect with people where it's just dialed up a notch, where it's just right. you and yourself on purpose, you know, with clear intent. And so it's just been a really fun analogy to play with <laughs> for the last two years. I know it's a great because well, and that's what I love about it, too. It's not like just follow this formula. It's sort of like, how can I help you find your best self in expressing um, yourself onto the page, essentially, right? And so how do you feel about helping people find their style? Do you think anyone, everyone has their style, or are there some people that just, they're going to always need help with writing? I think everybody, I mean, not, I think we all have a voice and I think that's the biggest thing is that everybody wants to freak out and be like, finding my voice, you know, and yeah, it's definitely <laughs> a process and your voice may be different today than it is two years ago or two hours ago, depending on your mood, you know, so like we can't put too much pressure on ourselves to find this one voice that's going to be consistent and never change because we're always growing and changing, but we do. I mean, we do all have a voice. And so my biggest, I have a blog post about it and it's like the shockingly simple secret to discovering your voice is just listen to yourself. And so that's one of the really practical tips I give my students and everybody who will ask is to take the BFF test and literally read what you've written out loud to your best friend or your spouse or your mom or your kids. And if you feel like an awkward goonberger when you're reading it out loud and you're like, oh my God, I would never say that. <laughs> that's a sign that you need to go back and restyle it a bit, you know, until it feels more comfortable. And it's funny that this tracks back like years and years. I studied abroad in Chile when I was in college and I would write emails every week to my family. And one week my sister Jenny wrote me and she was like, I love reading your emails because I feel like you're just right here. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was probably like an anchor moment because I didn't ever, especially with writing, because like writing's okay, but it's not my favorite thing to do. You know, I like speaking better, but I feel like that was an anchor kind of moment where 
that meant a lot to me that my sister was thousands of miles away. None of us had ever been this far away from home. And she was like, I feel like you're right here. And so I carried that with me when I was teaching public speaking. It was all about being conversational. And again, like just because you're giving a presentation doesn't mean you need to sound like a news anchor all of a sudden, you know, and you right. metamorphosize into a different person when you're up at the front of the room. And it's the same thing now in my business when it comes to copy. And when I was a park ranger, you know, it's the same thing. Like it's okay to be yourself and your job as a service provider, especially on your website when you're not there, like inside the website to meet them face to face is to help people hear you before they hire you. And so you just have to realize you exactly as you are is exactly what they need to see represented right. in the written word. Because then when they're on the phone with you or they're in your office, that's who they're going to get. So you don't want to pretend to be right. someone different than you are or else you feel like you have to put on a show when they come in the door. And that's not fun for anybody. Right. You, that's how you maintain trust is to be authentic from the beginning to the end, you know? And I think too, especially... I know, you know, from a therapist perspective, we can also tend to speak in a lot of psychobabble. Yeah. And I'm like, but you wouldn't talk to your spouse with the psychobabble. You know, right. it's you, you shift the way the language versus when you're talking amongst your peers. Yeah, there's terms we use, but not to your best friend or I love that tip. That's really important for those that are listening when they start thinking about what they're putting on paper or even what they're going to say in like a talk. Yeah. To make sure that it's comfortable and easy for them. Right. And that goes both ways because on one hand, you want to use your words, be yourself, use your own personality. Yes. But on the other hand, you do want to use their words when you're getting their attention because you don't want to be speaking. It's a really good point. And your jargon, and it's like, you know, these advanced terms and clinical terms or technology, but whenever she's on the website or she's online and she's Googling, like she's not looking for insert term here. She's looking mm -hmm. for so frustrated with my relationships. Oh my gosh, my husband, what are we, we're at a breaking point or like whatever the issue is. And so yeah. you've got to get really familiar and start building what I call a copy bank where you literally just start a word document or a Google doc or an Evernote file or whatever, where you're literally capturing these nuggets so you can get into her mind and get into her brain and meet her exactly where she is. So that then you can say, hey, I got you. I totally get that that's what you're going through. And that's exactly why I, I'm here to help, you know. And so it's good to use their words at the top. Then you can introduce what you have to offer. Yeah. And I, you know, we recommend just thinking about like who you talk to in your sessions and things and what your clients are saying. Where else do you find that you can get a copy, fill your copy bank? So there's all kinds of places online. I mean, but like for product-based businesses, Amazon reviews, you know, when people are talking about their frustration with a particular problem or solution, there's a Facebook group for everything under the sun. But if you know your particular clients and where they hang out or what their favorite blogs would be and it's comments about things, because it doesn't have to be even their language about that particular pain point. It could be just about something that they really love and something they want or aspire to and how they describe that dream. And that's beautiful to mention and going to get their attention too, you know, so you can get creative. And then obviously, again, you have your dream clients, hopefully they're in your office that you're talking to. You can also just ask them, you know, or pick up the phone and just talk to people. Or if you know friends of friends who sound like exactly the kind of people that you want to work with, just ask them. You can just ask or you can listen, you know, best is to ask and listen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be good, especially as therapists to do. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> if we're not doing that, there's a problem. Yeah. So when you, I don't know if you've ever encountered this. I write a lot, right? So we have like our own website blog, and we have a syndicated column. I don't know. I write like 10, 12 blogs a month or whatever. Oh Sometimes I sit down and I'm just like, I don't want to do this, or I just don't know what to say. Like, what? How do you help people get unstuck from that place of like? I don't have anything to say or I don't know what to say or I don't know how to say it. Right. So when it comes to not knowing what to say, there's two, two ways that could go. Number one is it's okay not to say anything, you know, and it's okay not to fill the air with words or to fill the internet with another blog post. Like I just went through a period of, I think a month where I didn't even write a new blog post and I'm trying to get better about that. Cause I know there's something I like being able to give value and consistent value, but I'm right. like, well, 
there's like over a hundred blog posts. If somebody wants value, it's there, you know, it's not like <laughs> yes. not visible anymore. Um, but I think one, it's okay, you know, and you don't have to force yourself to do something that feels really not good if you're really in that zone. But if you're just in the zone of like, I have too many ideas and I can't pick one, one thing you could do is to just ask people. Like if you're like, I have a list of 50 ideas, but none of them are jumping out at me. It can make it more fun when you know who you're creating for. So you can ask people like, hey, what's one thing you would really love to hear about? Or even forget that list and just ask them, like Total Request Live, TRL style, and be like, what do you want to hear about? What can I answer? Because it's just more fun to create when you know someone's waiting for it. Yeah. And often it'll happen where you write it and somebody says, this is exactly what I needed, even if you planned it like three months ago or something. But still, it's fun for me. I know sometimes I just need that mutual inspiration society to know who I'm creating for. Mm -hmm. So that's one way of doing it. Or again, every time you're out there in the real world, like it's fun to draw analogies from like unexpected things. Like one of I actually my first video blog post was how running a business is like breastfeeding. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I remember really, that actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really unexpected analogy, but it was fun for me because it was bringing in my mom life and then what I was experiencing in the first several months of my business. So when you're just out in the world, just start looking for opportunities to draw weird parallels and connections because really that's going to help people more anyway than if you're just like, why it's difficult to create a blog post every week, you know, which I think is actually kind of what the how running a business is like breastfeeding thing was about because I was like, I'm really struggling just because something comes naturally doesn't mean it comes easily. Right. <laughs> and so, um, Anyway, so like don't force it, but also just kind of think outside the box a bit about where you can find inspiration or straight up again, get, get back to the dream client who you're actually trying to serve in the first place and say, what do you want? You know, and then mm -hmm. let them do the deciding for you and make it easier that way. Yeah, those are great tips. So what is part of your creative process? Do you have any rituals or things around mm -hmm. <laughs> when you create? It's a crazy mess. And I've, I've, since I just finished my second year of business, I've been doing a lot of like looking back, you know, at the past year. And it really was, it was a huge roller coaster for me personally and professionally. Personally, I lost two pregnancies last year. So the emotions that went up and down and up and down with that yeah. were really unexpected. Um, and then professionally, it was like, okay, I had my first big launch. And then I was basically in what I call like a self imposed income hibernation. And then I had another big thing and then down. And then another big launch and then down. And it was just like so up and down. Mm -hmm. So that's been my process to date. But at this stage, I would like to change it and even it out a bit, you know. Um, so we'll find out if that actually happens. But my creative process is very manic. It's a lot like, okay, when I'm on, I'm on. Like when I created this video series that is still running today for my, um, for my course, I created all of that like in a week. You know, and when I created the first version of my course, I created all of that in like four weeks, you know, and it was just like up till whatever. I'm glad I'm not alone in that. <laughs> um, I'm the same way. Yeah. Crazy. And I'm, I don't, you know, I know some people say like, this is just how some people operate and, and some people are at it and some people thrive on it. And I guess I do because, you know, you do it for a reason. Like what's that, as Dr. Phil says, like, how's that working for you? There's something in it for me for doing that. But at this point, I'm just like, I'm over it. I don't want to do that. I don't think that it has to be all hustle and grind and crazy. Like, right. I need sleep. That's good for my brain, and it's good for me and my family and everyone around me. It's good to remember to have lunch, you know. So um, what I'm doing now is trying to create a foundation, finally, two years in, where it doesn't have to be like that. And finally, document. Right. These are all the steps so that even if I'm still got to go through all the steps, I know that it's all written down and it's not all stuck in my brain. So that's right. part of the new creative process and I can just feel the tides shifting to like a new project just something different you know mm -hmm. I yeah I think that um my creativity comes in spurts and then you have the steady stuff of whatever you're doing for your business and then a fun project comes along and I love that kind of flow but you're right when it's manic that's yeah you want to stabilize a little bit and I think that that's I think that that's normal too for people that are starting out in whatever business that you're in. You're just trying to figure out who you are, what works for you and what the people need that you serve and who, who are you at your best. And as you sort through that out, that out, then it becomes easier to replicate over time. But those initial years are, are a learning curve. 
Yeah, it's a season, you know, and I love it for what it is because if I hadn't been throwing out a date for public accountability and then running after it, like I feel like that's what I did. I threw the ball, then I chased it. Okay, I'm going to launch this course. Oh, now I got to do it. Okay, I'm going to reopen it this summer. Oh, now I got to do it. I'm glad I did it because I got past these checkpoints and milestones that I otherwise wouldn't have because I know I need deadlines. But at this point, like I said, I'm just kind of ready for something different, but I'm thankful for that time. And I feel like if you've got that wave of motivation, ride that sucker till it crashes on the beat. (laughs) Oh, that's enough. I told myself I'd only work two hours today. It's like, no, if you have the motivation, like I was up Mm -hmm. to one last night, for example, I haven't burned the midnight oil in a while. Um, because like I said, I'm just not in the mood to, but last night I was really in the zone, like documenting and just like finally writing down systems for stuff I was doing. And I was like, I'm not going to stop because I can't promise I'm going to have this motivation tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you can. Great. Yeah. Awesome. So what is one of the favorite pieces you've ever written? Oh man. I think actually one of my favorite pieces is one of my shortest pieces, which I think I reposted on my blog and I'll send you a link. But I remember spending so much time crafting my my story in 500 words. I think it had to be 500 words. Um, for my, who she's now my friend Carrie Green, the founder of the Female Entrepreneur Association, had this digital magazine called This Girl Means Big Business. Yeah, uh-huh. I was invited to contribute to it, and I think it was the December issue of 2013. And at the time, now Carrie has like over 200,000 Facebook fans. At the time, it was like 70,000. And I was just like so, oh, like so nervous. This is the biggest like crowd I've ever been in front of or whatever. But I put so much thought into it. It was a big struggle of resistance and rewriting and avoiding it and then rewriting it again. But I just love because it just captures the story, you know, and it talks about like, waking up to the the baby monitor every morning and choosing my word as faith and then just diving headfirst. And it's not all sunshine and rainbows or whatever, but it was also really symbolic because in that piece, I said, like publicly stated and admitted out loud, I think it's very possible that I'll hit six figures in my first year of business, which at the time I was only 50,000 in and I had like three months to go. So I was like, that's a big, you know, that's like a big <laughs> statement and I'm making it in front of all these people. And it was really like, a big stretchy moment and sure enough that's totally what happened you know so it was symbolic for lots of reasons but I like that it was like my story in Mm -hmm. in a coconut shell I love that and you know you spoke to something that I think is kind of common that fear of being seen you know 70,000 people like I look at my list and I just don't I just don't think about it now but I remember initially like I just would sit there and see what people would say or like, oh gosh, this is going to go out to this many people. And now it's kind of like, oh, well, so what do you, do you think there, there's a point where you overcome the fear of being seen or um, noticed or how do you kind of jump that hurdle so that you still put yourself out there? I think you just, you just have to do it. You know, like it's not something that you can think your way into being comfortable in front of people. You know, like you have to literally do it. So even me, like I've been doing videos and such, which is fine, but I almost feel like I'm kind of a hermit over here at my kitchen table in Honolulu, (laughs) you know, and I've only met, I mean, it's so funny to me that like most of my very best friends in my life, I have not even met them in real life, you know, so like I'm about to be going to Texas and finally meeting up with people and speaking it off the charts live and whatever. And I'm, I have my own set of nerves about like being seen in the flesh, like being seen, literally being seen Mm -hmm. in person. I'm like, I'm going to be taller than people expect. I don't think they see all my freckles on my videos, just like silly things like that. And so I think, and the best way to do it is to just put yourself out there and do it. And then when you realize um, I love the book, The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovelshin. And one of the affirmations is something like, I walk up to the lion on my path and find it's a friendly Airedale. But it's kind of like we build things up in our heads. Then when we finally get there, it's like, oh, that was not a big deal. Actually, that was really fun. Let's do that. Again. <laughs> like, that's the best way to do it is just to put yourself out there. And again, realize like if you have something of value to share, it's selfish of you not to share it, you know, like you can't, you can't just leave it in there. You got to let it out so people can benefit from it. What's been some of your, or one of your favorite transformations in helping someone find their style? Gosh, it happens so quick. It's usually like in the first week of a course about copy when they just have this light bulb and it was the same when I was helping people one-on-one 
when they just realize at the heart of it all, like, yeah, recipes are great and copy is important and whatever, but at the heart of everything I'm doing, I just want to help people be comfortable being themselves and realize that you don't have to put up a front. You don't have mm-hmm. to and the right people will love you for exactly who you are. So whenever they have that light bulb moment of, oh my gosh, I can totally just write like me, especially the ones who are doctors, lawyers, dentists, and they're in these like highly regarded. Yeah. And you feel like it's not professional for a right. doctor to use the word gonna or <laughs> whatever it is. Um, and it's like, well, no, I, I can just be me. And then they start to realize that it's a different kind of people that they're attracting. And then the wrong people are, you know, they move on to other stiffer pastures or whatever. Stiffer um, pastures. But I love, yeah. I love that light bulb moment. That was my favorite part of teaching in the college classroom too, was just seeing people be like, oh, this doesn't have to be such a big deal. It doesn't have to be like me stepping into this zone of communicating professionally. You know, like it's just – Put a little more purpose behind it, and you're good to go. I love it. So are there, is there any one other favorite exercise? I mean, you've given a few, like the copy bank and other ones, that you want to recommend to people that are just starting out. Maybe they're building their website. Maybe they're just launching their practice, and they're like, okay, I'm going to build my web page or fill out my directory listing. What, what is one exercise to help get them started? One thing that's really important, again, is about that purpose and knowing the purpose of every page. So I would just say really simply think about, and I have recipes and free videos and stuff that can help with like what to put on the page, but in the heart of it all is just knowing your purpose because there's not one right way to write any page. But if you're really clear on the purpose and exactly what you want people to know from this post or page, what you want them to feel or how you want them to feel because there's an element of that. that It's not tangible. You can't grab onto it, but you just know like there's a little bit of personality or just the language that you use. There's a different connotation in this word versus that word. Um, And then what you want people to do is really, really important. So make it super clear and don't make them have to think or like they read through this page and it's great, but then now they don't know where to go next. Like, especially on your website, you're the host. So it's your job to make sure people know this is the linen closet, the bathroom's over here, you know, and you don't want them to be wandering around aimlessly because then they'll feel awkward and then they'll just kind of scoot out the back door while nobody's watching. So right. it's your job to make sure people feel comfortable and they know exactly what to expect. So before you write a page, post, email, or whatever, just think, what do I really want people to know? What do I want people to feel? And what do I want them to do? And then say that as you and as concisely as you can and it'll be fine. And again, just give yourself grace and know that like you're going to get better with time. You know, it's just a muscle. You got to keep working it out. And eventually you'll be like, oh, look at me. I'm pretty good at this now. (laughs) Oh my goodness. If I read like my old stuff, I don't, I don't recognize that writing anymore. It it does transform over time and it's fine. And as you keep creating, uh, you find your spot. Like you're saying, you find the people that want to learn from you and um, the other ones go to the stiffer pasture. As you say. So I'm going to start using that. I love it. If you are the stiffer pasture, that's fine too. Cause I feel like yeah. some people are like, I have to be this funny, charismatic or whatever. And I'm like, no, like if you're really straightforward, you. please let people see that because there are people who are so turned off by the loud American personality or whatever, you know? And so like, it's totally okay. If you're the driest, most flatline person, please make sure that people know that so that they can sign up for that. Cause that's what they want, you know? Yes. And so it's not like try to be engaging, try to be anything. No, nope. just let you bubble up to the surface again, slap some purpose on it. And you're good to go. It's funny how we can give such great advice to other people like that. I don't think anybody that's listening would tell someone, no, you need to act a certain way. We would all encourage people to be themselves, but when it comes to us, sometimes it takes a little bit more of a challenge to overcome that. Yeah. So what are some ways that people can learn more from you? Because I have been on your list forever um, <laughs> and I've gleaned and I, we even reference you in our training uh, in our boot camp. We say like, like I talk about how one of the things you said was like, you put in parentheses, like a gesture sometimes, if that's something that could enhance what you're saying. And, mm-hmm. and so I encourage people that are in our boot camp to check out a course about copy. So what are other ways that people can know Nikki and learn from your brilliance? 
Well, basically everything is Nikki Elledge Brown. So my website, NikkiElledgeBrown.com, and if you just go to blog, or even better yet, if you go to NikkiElledgeBrown.com slash archive, then you can shop around with all the blog posts that I have actually managed to write and publish. (laughs) (laughs) Shop around in there. Um, And then, like I said, I'm in the mood to create more stuff this summer. I don't know what exactly I'm going to create, and it won't be anything huge, but like even just little, here's one really helpful. Full PDF, you know, like here's just little things like that. I just feel that kind of stuff bubbling up. So, Nikki Elledge Brown on pretty much all social media. If you misspell Elledge, Google will help you out, so it's no big deal. Um, yeah. yeah, that's where I am. I hang out a lot on Facebook, and I'm getting more active on Instagram too because I just like to take pictures of mostly Bryson or Ninja Turtle. Yeah. <laughs> Never. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll put all those details in the notes below so that people can click the links and find. But I really appreciate, I mean, just in the short amount of time, you have jam-packed it with tons of great information and tools that people can go use right now, get off the phone or whatever they're listening and implement something and really start to step into their own voice. Yeah. Well, th- again, thanks for having me. It was like tricking myself into creating a blog post because now I can share this video too. <laughs> I can awesome. say, hey, look, y'all. She asked some great questions. <laughs> you know, and now I don't have to write a blog. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So thanks for enabling me. <laughs> You're welcome anytime. Seriously. All right. So um, that's all for today, guys. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.